So can you give some examples of what change you brought in into the course, into the curriculum? So, you know, uh, things like uh, the earlier course will talk about uh, how do you plan, what is the structure of a lesson plan, uh, what is the structure of a um, uh, assessment matrix and uh, how do you do that and all those kind of things, you know, how do you plan lesson plan, how do you prepare a lesson plan, how do you do this. And the problem is that the student who's coming to me in a physics classroom had done core physics. Now this is students has done, uh, would have done, you know, uh, certain components which are content oriented in physics and they were doing good. I mean, I'm not saying that they did not know the content. Almost 100% of the students knew the content of physics. But pedagogy or planning is not about knowing the content. So they were doing this course in educational psychology. They were doing thinkers also that was happening in different papers. But as someone in the classroom, in a physics methodology classroom, there was always this gap that they were not able to justify why they are making a kind of a plan, why they are doing things like that. So there was this gap between understanding the subject itself and knowing the content of the subject. So they knew the content of the subject, but there was no other paper in the course, in the whole program, which was talking about the nature of the subject. So which technically we call it epistemology of the subject, that how subject by itself grew, you know, and there is no opportunity. I would know there was a Newton, I would know there was an Einstein, but I would not know the difference between how we arrived from to Einstein from Newton, what was the struggles of Newton. So that entire journey of science, physics in particular for me, that was that people was, were not familiar with. And that is something I felt was missing in their own conviction of justification. They would not know that why do I have to plan it like this? Why certain chapters have to be planned differently? Because every chapter is oriented or focused on a different kind of a processor skill, on a different kind of a thinking skill. So where you use an activity, where you use an example, where you want to take the children outside and you want to plan something accordingly. I think this idea does not exist in their minds. And we were doing no effort to bridge this gap. So one of the important things that we brought into the, uh, in the, into the syllabus was uh, nature of physics. So you understand what physics actually is. You got to understand that how physics is different from history. They are both very interesting disciplines. But you got to understand that what a history teacher can do that a physics teacher cannot do. Yeah. And I that is needed in every subject. No? I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I remember one of these episodes, you know, I was in the school, these students have, interns have gone to the school. And there is a student in physics who had made a crossword. Okay, because then I started promoting that your style has to be different. You can't be doing the same kind of assessment and stuff like that. So I said, okay, okay, just do that. And they were like, okay. Uh, so this girl did a crossword and there was an English girl over there and she said that uh, uh, but a, a crossword happens only in English. Why is it there in your physics textbook? So then I, I just immediately asked her, uh, do English teachers have a copyright on crossword? And she says, no ma'am, Venika, that is the point. That there might be certain activities, you might not be doing any kind of hands-on activities in an English class. So that hands-on activities belongs as much to you as to a physics person, as the crossword belongs to you and to a physics person. So in a way you brought in also pedagogy or maybe for adults andragogy in a sense. Yeah. Styles of uh, teaching and learning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We got to do that because whom I was teaching, they were adult learners. Mm -hmm. They were not kids. Mm -hmm. And unless they experience that kind of a learning by themselves, they don't, they're not able to take it back to the classroom. Uh, no harm in quoting Gandhi, you know, be the change you want to see. So you also arrive at those points, you have those points of struggle as a teacher by yourself. And then you kind of do that. So there's a continuous Because often I've seen, I mean, like in 
at college level, tertiary level. The methodology or the approach, there's not too much of a focus. No? That's right. So they teach it in the normal, usual way, you know, transforming, uh, transacting Transfer. knowledge or just transforming yeah. information. But this making the, the learner active, you know, that's not something that they don't learn at all. Absolutely. Bringing andragogy and pedagogy uh, principles into that. That's right. Uh, you know, um, one can still justify, I don't, I'm not trying to justify because I tell you what we have done with that regard to that. One can still justify it in classroom which are liberal courses. But you can't justify this classroom in a teacher education, in a teacher education institute that I'm asking my students to do something in their classrooms, but I'm being very traditional in my approach and I'm not being student centric. So how will they learn being student centric because they don't come from that system. We want, we are preparing teachers for tomorrow, change makers, we use all those kind of big phrases. But how will they learn to make a change if they don't experience, experience. a change, experience a change. So I think for me, uh, the, the kind of experiences that I had in the classroom as a B. Ed. student and as an M. Ed. student, that gave me an idea that a teacher always have to be student centric, no matter what level are you teaching or what, what level you are interacting with the students. It goes same with your research scholars also. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like that. So in a way, like do unto teachers what you want them to do Absolutely. unto students. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How can I ask somebody to do something which I am not doing by myself and they are looking at me daily? Yeah. You know, every week, three hours a day, they are looking at me and then saying she's not doing it. Lecturing on child centric. Lecturing <laughs> on child centric. She's so teacher centric when she's not lecturing <laughs> on child centric. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then I came up with different courses also. So this was one thing which happened then. MPhil program, I came up with a different set of questions where this approach I tried to kind of, you know, we win. I try to kind of, you know, uh, then come up with an MPhil course where I try to bring inclusion with the focus on diversity. So in classes, we try to move into a positive mindset with exclusion being a precondition to our learning. So nobody is denying the idea on process of exclusion, but we are not focusing on that. We are not focusing on excluded perspectives. We are focusing on the institutional practices that need to broaden up, that needs to increase their spectrums, you know, redefine their spectrums and core more, call more things as, as, as abilities. So they have to define their charter. It's not the people who have to define that. In a way, it's not, uh, you know, looking only at a negativity, yeah. what is not there, but look at what can be absolutely brought in and what can be done absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. and that had an impact you know subsequently on the kind of research also that i am guiding or i have guided we always try to look up for the situations or the socio personal whatever be the situations document the barriers but not kind of resolve the barriers mm -hmm. uh, which were you know which were beyond which were socio personal barriers but we'll try to say that if these barriers have to be removed, the system have to come up and work a little differently and then that will happen. And something which I'm saying, you know, we, we, we're trying to kind of, you know, always push one step at a time. Uh, so last year, uh, with the help of uh, IEEL is one of the institutions in um, our, uh, our university, Institute of Lifelong Learning. Uh, so this uh, NEP, had just been adopted and the universities are were in our in 2005 fact, or no, nine, now nine, 2020 nine, 2020 yeah. Yeah. so 2020 and 21 i think we were just sitting and having a conversation director happened to be a colleague of mine professor pankaj Aroda. so he just we were just having a conversation how do we implement this how do we implement this you know and then we went to that section of higher education where one of these titles is motivated energized faculty you know and you know in education we always say this that all the higher education people need to have some orientation in pedagogy if they don't have it they, they just go content specific so we just had a discussion there was this platform he was director at triple l that time so we were like can we do something he says okay let's just do that so 
I said, okay, let's prepare a program, some kind of a thing, and then let's see how where it goes. So we thought of preparing a very theoretical kind of a thing because we didn't know how far it will go. So we uh, we had this discussion. Then I spoke with two more colleagues of mine, uh, Sandeep and Subhash, and then we just moved on and we agreed to. We said, okay, this is an agenda we want to work on, and we are working without any direction to it. We don't know where it will go. We just did that. We made the module came out to be good. I mean, like, I'm not saying this, people said that. And then, you know, in one, um, one, 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 uh, one fine moment, uh, he said, should we try to implement it? We do a pilot on this. I said, I can speak. You have to arrange people, you have to arrange forums and funding and whatever, whatever we have to do. So we converted this module into a 12 days faculty development program. And we announced it through IEEL because they were doing it that they had this agenda to do that. We announced it through that and that is something which became very, very interesting. We had the first brochure that we brought out, you know, it said only teacher who are not from education would be participant to this program. So a lot of our colleagues got angry also. We said, no, but you guys, we don't want you guys in there, you know, at this moment. Like we want to, really we wanted to try that what happens when it goes to the liberal course teachers and how they respond to the whole idea of pedagogy and things like that. That was a wonderful program we conducted. Of course, we had too many resource people coming in, talking about. So I, but I think it came out to be very well. It was very well accepted by the fraternity. They said we require these kind of a, uh, kind of an induction into the whole idea and you know everybody in the university is teaching is a bright person the only thing is if you don't bring in that perspective in their profession they just fail to acknowledge it or they're just putting it aside they don't know this even exists so that was something which came up as a, a good successful program with evidence-based practices you know we could really do that we did a lot of different kind of assessment in that a lot of our colleagues participated in it and then finally, uh, I went. So I had to go, so I went. But we could take it out in form of an ISBN booklet and we placed it on IEEL uh, publications. So it's there, it's available for people to go and read. But who reads a document? Who will kind of go to an institution and read the document and do things like that? So I don't think many people read about that. After I came back... So what were the elements in that program? I'm just curious. Ah, that's interesting. So there were around, I think, 18 to 21 elements. But we did certain core things, like for example, diversity in a classroom, of course, if the course is there, that, that, that topic is going to be there. We had themes on gender, that how gender inclusion has to happen. We had themes on social um, inclusion, you know, so we primarily wanted to tell them that students are different in the classroom. So your learning styles or teaching styles have to be different, you know, those kind of things. We also had things like curriculum construction, what are the steps of that. We spoke about assessment. One of the very interesting idea that came up was the idea of others. You know, as a teacher, it's very important for me to have my own understanding of others. Understanding others was one of the things which was very, uh, very deeply appreciated because Usually the child, the student does not exist in the focus. It's only the teacher uh, in a liberal course and the subject. So I know my subject. I know the content of my subject. The student doesn't become my subject. <laughs> so, you know, those kind of things. So idea of others was very, uh, very warmly accepted. Uh, then we had this idea of, uh, you know, uh, disability specific also we spoke. We did not go into the details of it because we have this equal opportunity cell. There are places, but how to organize education uh, for children with or students with uh, different kind of neurodiversities and other diversities. We had a discussion on that, so that was there. Uh, these were the primary area we even uh, spoke about. We had around three sessions on a teacher as a researcher and how do a teacher help a student become a researcher, even in an undergrad class. So we were kind of looking at it a year back but later this program came in, four-year program, where they said that fourth year they will be doing some research or something like that. So it was well accepted at that point also. So that was interesting. We had things on digital 
resources. We had things on, uh, you know, virtual learning platforms. These were two different sessions. Many people do not understand that digital is different from virtual. You know, there's a kind of a, it's the same for many people. So when we get on to that and have a discussion, they were able to appreciate that. We even had media as a source of uh, learning, you know, how media uh, becomes a source of learning. So these were the kind of themes we had, which were quite many, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, quite a lot packed into a 12-day program. Yeah, uh, because we just wanted them to understand that for you to be a great teacher, this much is important. We are, we are just kind of, you know, uh, flipping you over the pages. These are the dimensions for you to be... Uh, if they want to, they can go deeper. Absolutely. And they were, then they were all doing some individual pro projects, you know, during that thing. They all picked up something and they wanted to do that. So some people worked on assessment, other worked on curriculum, some of them worked on inclusion, somebody worked on gender. So there were 30 participants in that program. And, and they all worked according to their own thing. So that was the idea, you know, if in an institution we have different people who are inclined towards different kind of orientations, they will bring that inclusive perspective in the institutional ethos. Mm -hmm. Institutional ethos at multiple point of times are so exclusionary that, that it becomes difficult for many students to stay in the school, in the, in the institution. So that's... Social inclusion is also a very important part as uh, part of institutional ethos. One more thing was uh, I wanted to ask, uh, just wondering about it. The personhood of a teacher and their professional life, does it come into play in tertiary education? Uh, it is important being a teacher in, in a primary school, I know, elementary also, high school also. But what about tertiary? Is there some work done on the personhood of that uh, uh, the professional? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the teacher's own belief system uh, comes into the classroom. So when we talk about inclusion, that's one thing which we have to very typically be talking about. And that is why we talk about reflections. Otherwise, if we, if we have this belief that you know, the teacher's person who doesn't come into pedagogy, we probably don't have to talk about a reflective teacher. We talk about reflective teacher because we say that there is something which must be so deep inside that you're not able to recognize and, but you might be faulting in the classroom. You might not be doing great. You might be um, inevitably ignoring certain children in the classroom or promoting certain children in the classroom. This may just happen. You're not consciously doing it, but it may just happen because these are so deep-rooted in, in Because hand. it comes from your experience of schooling, etc. Right. Right. And you carry it with you, you unless you analyze and, That's right. pour and reflect on that. That's right. So in the case of content-based, uh, like liberal uh, course teachers which, who are doing this uh, uh, liberal programs, uh, I think that it is a different kind of a, it has a different kind of a implication because their student also comes to a classroom to learn physics and the teacher also brings physics to the classroom so there is a kind of you know there is a match in the uh, there is a match in the what do we say in the purpose of being in that particular place but even there you know the social inclusion has a lot of meaning why certain students will be looked up in a certain way I'll tell you an example onto this, that, that would be interesting. I had this very amazing student uh, coming to our B.A. program and uh, he was from Rajasthan. So this person did his uh, graduation in Hindi, okay, and he came from Rajasthan to, uh, he went for, uh, he went for masters to JNU first. So he was there in the classroom and uh, he knew the content, he could understand, but of course, that um, university is English medium, so there was not much of converse. Especially, more of the most of the science classrooms are in in Delhi. I would say are English medium based kind of classrooms in tertiary. So, uh, you know, this guy just got up and started speaking something in Hindi because that's the only way he could express. And there was a laughter in the classroom. You know. He said, he was sharing this with me later, you know, when he came to the BS program. 
He said, I felt a little awkward for a while, but then I continued. You know, so he just continued, he finished his point and then he was like, okay, if you don't understand anything in it, I can give you a translation of the terms. But idea you should be able to understand, you know, terms may be something which you don't make sense of, which is okay. So then, you know, he said that I then got along with the students over there. Many of them became my friends later and things like that. So I think this was one of the guys who could just put himself in a position and he was, uh, he had that kind of a self-efficacy to go through that idea of laughter in a, in a full classroom. But there could be students who are not able to manage that. They may just not have those kind of skills, those kind of grooming, personal grooming, self-concept that they can go ahead with that. So it becomes a very different space for them when they, they're in those kind of learning environments. Their dictions may not be, uh, you know, as, as per the, dis yeah, yeah, as not even correct, but, you know, they, they may have the regional touch in that. So people would kind of, I don't understand when you speak with this regionality, even if you speak the same language, I don't understand that. So I think that kind of a uh, thing for clothing, food, those kind of stigmatized kind of understanding of people who are coming from with different socio-personal conditions is something which we need to really work on. And that is important. Whereas in teacher education, it is also about the pedagogy, you know, that which we talked before that if I'm talking about student centric, I have to be student centric myself. If I'm talking about flexibility, I have to be flexible by, by myself. So there are different challenges, but there are challenges of equal potential, which needs to be addressed in all these things. We are planning to do it in a little better way at Delhi University level. We're trying to work through this that all teachers gradually get this understanding of pedagogy. We are very hopeful that something good will happen. I will keep you updated on that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You have been able to bring about, I mean, changes in a systemic way. Also, mm -hmm. I feel, you know, from the courses that you have done, bringing the focus to andragogy, pedagogy, yes. you know. Uh, how difficult was it for you? 